special guest star, Dean Stockwell. Tonight's episode, Legion of the Lost. Just ain't the time to put the bite on me. I'd share if I wasn't sick. I'm expecting a bad time tonight. What's the hair in an alley? They could shoot a cannon off down here. You think I'm getting out of bed? Okay, okay. So you find him about seven. Truck comes by at eight. I lug the stuff out by seven. You ever seen him before? What's to see? He's a wino, right? Like they say. You seen one. Okay, if I dump the junk. Looks like somebody rolled in for pocket change. Pretty much routine down here, Steve. Yeah, that's what it looks like, all right. How you doing? How are you, Cap? How's it going? Okay, you know that guy there? Charlie. Hey, you got any use for that, Cap? Yeah, how about it? Yeah, fingerprints. You got a last name? What's the difference? Why no Charlie? How about it, Cap? Well, we'll keep the bag around it while we're drinking. Red tape, you know how it is. Charlie what? Why no, Charlie? What's the difference? Uh, look, what about it, Cap? Uh, ain't it worth something? You're up for commissioner, Cap, and you get our vote, right? Yeah, both of us. <laughs> Let's go to Al's, huh? Yeah. You never get anything out of that tribe, Steve. They just don't open up to outsiders. No, they don't look too concerned, are they? Well, finding a body in an alley gets to be an everyday occurrence down here. Not three in two weeks all clubbed the same way. You can't expect these boys to keep score. Well, somebody's got to keep score, right, Vic? Let's see if we get the report moving. Right away. said you got your limit already. What'd you do, use a net? No. Well, come on, come on, let's see the catch. Where is it? All the fish you're gonna find in there is leftover tuna salad. You're putting me on. No. I've got my mouth all set for a trout dinner you're gonna lay out. Well, you get your mouth all set for a tuna salad. You didn't catch anything? Oh, sure. Beer cans and bread wrappers. You should have stayed. I wouldn't expect you till next week. Maybe your luck might have changed. Yeah, you walk that river for two days, look at nothing on your reel for two nights while you're swatting mosquitoes, and a hot tub begins to sound pretty good to you. Yeah. Let's see, Olsen said you called at 7.30. It's 11 now. It's a pretty good time from where you were. What are you grinning about? You couldn't stand it, could you? Couldn't stand what? Being away when you heard what happened. So that's it, huh? You thought that I'd telephone because... All I'm saying is I got more faith in your ability with a fly rod than I do in your ability to take a week's vacation like any other normal person. And I'm saying this, this right here, prima facie evidence, Lieutenant. Diner got you, didn't I? 
really tried to smoke a pass me, didn't she? <laughs> the old hard fast one. No, no. <laughs> you're not sore, are you? Sore? No, I'm not sore. I'm happy you're here. This is a tough one. Yeah. Rudy told me. Third one of those winos killed within two weeks. What yeah. do you think? <laughs> I want to know what you're thinking before you bust. Yeah, well, grab yourself a cup of coffee. While I shave and shower. Rudy said you found nothing behind the bum but a bottle, right? Right. So that rules out mugging, right? Right. Well, what I mean is that you don't kill for the price of a bottle and then leave it behind, right? Right. Is that new? Yeah. Jeannie gave it to me for Father's Day. It works without a cord. Mm-hmm. Let me see it. Yes, so what do we got now? We got uh, three bums beaten to death for no apparent reason. Right. There could be a connection, though, you know. Could be one of those kooks, maybe, like we had a couple of years ago. One man campaigned to clean up the whole city. That's right. I remember you told me about that. Yeah. It's awful tough to know what's going on down there. They don't like people asking questions. You ain't whistling. You know what I think we got to do? What? We got to put a man there undercover. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Somebody that walked all day, all night, worked their way right into that whole crowd. And I'll bet you within 48 hours, we got something. Come on, let me have that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, let me try it. It's a good idea, you know, undercover. Yeah, Olsen told me he said it. How do you feel about Avercheck? Are you kidding that fuzz-faced kid? Why, he'd stick out like a harp polisher in a house full of hookers. <laughs> okay, what about, uh, what about Peterson? Sure, Peterson. You'd put Peterson down there in that tenderloin after he walked that beat for 10 years with a nightstick? No, not Peterson. It's gotta be somebody they don't know, somebody who looks like them. Somebody who looks as though he hasn't slept in a feather bed all his life. Somebody who looks like he sleeps outside swatting mosquitoes. That's asking too much. Uh, say, I uh, just blew in from Stockton. Things quieted down. Mm, how so? Well, I understand you gotta be careful where you lay your head. Some of the brothers haven't been waking up. Oh, yeah. Don't give it a mind. Feud's over. Have peace on Earth. Yeah. Somebody mad at somebody. Uh, plain as day. <laughs> Three dead, right? That's what they tell me. And them three had a grudge. So you take number one, killing number two, and then number three, killing number one. And number four, uh, maybe it was three, having to get back at number two. I follow you, buddy. Smart thinking. Take it easy, buddy. Yeah. Hey, you... You need some help? Yeah, Keller. You're warm, comfortable, sitting down. Michael, how you doing? Oh, fine. Just fine. I talked to ten different guys. I got ten different theories. You know what the latest one is? The syndicate is moving in. Yeah, they want to scare the winos out. This money wants to build 16 high-rises in the area. The winos are cluttering up the neighborhood. Sounds terrific. What does he get from the lab? Well, they picked up some traces of casein, albumin, and wax from around the wound area. Now, uh, that's the kind of stuff that comes off of leather. So the weapon was leather covered? A sap, maybe? Leathered at the end? No, no. Gordon says a sap leaves a deeper impression at one end of the wound. These were uh, flat, hard blows, about six inches wide. And he says they left four significant impressions. Knuckles. Yeah, but that kind of force against a skull. Brass knuckles. That's right. And a leather could be a glove, right? Maybe. Any other connection between those three dead guys? No, nothing. Different backgrounds, drunk records in every city you can think of. We can't even prove they knew each other. So what about you? Where are you going to be staying tonight? Well, you said that they were all found outside, didn't you? Alley, pier, under the freeway. 
Yeah? Well, that's where I'm going to be. Outside, under that blue sky. I'll see you. Well, good luck. There's nothing there, son. How long have you had them? Believe me, son, when I tell you there's nothing there. There's no spiders, no mice, no nothing. When was the last time you had a drink? I've been in jail for three days. Dried out happens, huh? Cold, sober, and you're seeing everything that walks and crawls. What's your name, boy? Paul Thomas. Here. Get some of this hot coffee down you, son. Good for you. Come on. Come on, take some more. Here's a sandwich. Hey, now wait! Don't, Jake! Okay, okay. Don't get up. Jake, he was just going to give me a cup of coffee. Got to get a bottle. Turn straight and out, and we'll sneak him into beers tonight. What'd you have planned for the kid? Nothing. Coffee sandwich, maybe. You're not from around here. Where are you from, champ? Stockton. Just blew in this morning. Okay, Stockton. You get back there tomorrow. I catch you near here near that kid. They'll nail back what's left of you for six bits. You got that, champ? Guy. It's got to be. Had his last fight eight years ago. State contender for light heavy title in 57. That's him. Big Jake Wilson. Doesn't look like much now. But he can sure unload a punch like a sledgehammer. I ran a print check. Ex-Navy, no family. How did he hit bottom? Put a bartender through a plate glass window. Wasn't the first time he worked somebody over. Boxing commission pulled his license. What about lately? Well, he's got a file about a foot wide. Been out of jail, in and out of jail, every year in the tank. Except for the last two. Only a couple of busts in the last 30 months. He's got a plane drunk and a D&D. &D. He, uh, he laid this guy out in an alley. Arresting officers had already booked him, and the guy came to in the hospital said he didn't want to press charges. Or his luck, maybe. He could kill somebody with his fist, no doubt about it. You can say that again. Hey, what about motive? I don't know. He uh, just likes to use his hands, I guess. Yeah. Say, what about this Vera's place he mentioned? It's one of those independently run missions. It's owned by a lady named Vera Kingsley. Former alcoholic, just trying to help. She live there? No. No, she lives in L.A. She's got a mission there. She's also got one in San Pedro. Independent, no religious affiliation, clean rooms, hot meals, dollar a day. She pays a difference. It must be a packed house. It's not. No, it's too tough. You either got to be on the wagon or make it an effort. Backsliders get kicked out. Now, wait a minute. This Wilson guy, he's still hanging in there. No. Last two times he got booked, he gave that as his address. I figure that must be what's helping his record. You know, it doesn't make sense, you know that? What? A guy like that fighting to stay off the sauce, going around hammering heads? 
Maybe that's what happens when he starts boozing. No, he wasn't lit last night. Sure laid into you. Yeah. Could have left you like those other three juicers. Other three juicers? Yeah. What? You said a dollar a day. Yeah. Well, if Wilson's room in there, that's where I'm gonna be. Come on. Come on, come on now. A fancy dresser like you can afford a little more for a guy who's really down on his luck. Oh, you know, oh. hmm? Come on, give me a little. Easy, easy. Two dollars. Two dollars? Two days if you can last that long. Thanks for all the support. Get out of here, you bum. <clears throat> bum? <laughs> bum, he calls me a bum. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, hey, you looking for someone? I'm looking for a room. Who do I see? Well, you'd have to see Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates? Yes? Uh, Mr. Gates? That's right. I heard a man can get some help around here. You heard wrong. A man helps himself around here. I see. No, you don't. No one who ever walked through that door like you did ever left all of his problems behind. Neither will you. I'd like to try. A lot of men have tried. Only one out of 50 have lasted a week. Well, odds like that, a fellow has a lot of friends if he blows it, doesn't he? Uh, you do have a room. Yes, a job to go with it. Something to remember. A man rolls up his sleeves and pitches in. He may make a lot of friends who have been fighting the same fight that he's been fighting, who are willing to give him a helping hand. Well, now you know. That's a big step up from where I've been. Maybe it's the biggest step you'll ever make. Idea is not to fall off. I don't intend to. Your name is Wilson. Jake Wilson, what's yours? Smith, Mike Smith. Mike Smith. A lot of your relatives been here before you. Jake, names don't matter here, just results. Well, let's get you situated. All the meals are held in here. Hours are posted. The guests do all the cooking and the cleaning. You'll be told when it's your turn. Yes, sir. We have just one rule. No booze. Yes, sir. Not in the house, not on your breath. Yes, sir. One bit of trouble and you're out. Yes, sir. I'll take him up, Harry. I was just going to clean out Charlie's room anyway. Okay. Just see that he gets a shave, a shower, and a bed. We'll talk about that job later. Thank you, sir. Just up there on the first floor. Second door on your left. I came here for a hot bath and a clean bed. That's all. And I made you a promise. Mike Smith, huh? That's right. Well, you got a lot of guts, Smith. I'll give you that. What's bugging you, Wilson? You. You know why no? Who are you? Look, Wilson. I don't like to think about what I am any more than you probably do. And I don't like being pushed. Well, there's one thing I don't like about you, Smith. I don't like the way you answer questions. Then don't ask the questions. Jake? Yeah? Paul's looking for you downstairs. He says it's kind of important. I'll see you later, Smith. Jake. 
telling you about what happened to old Charlie, was he? Charlie? Yeah. Charlie Dermott. The fella just checked out of here. No, what happened? Oh, well, I guess you could say he kind of checked out for good, you know. Turned up in the alley the other morning. Got himself beat to death. I, I, I just I just thought maybe Jake might have been telling you about it. Looked like he was a little edgy, you know. Oh, you saw that too, huh? I thought it was just me because I I'm kind of shaky right now. No, 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 no. It was Jake that was shaking. Of course, he got a he got a right to be as close as he was to Charlie and the others. The others? Yeah, yeah. A fella called Ziggy got himself beat up the same way about a week ago, and then and then there was a old boy named. Uh, Guy Lucas. Yeah. Say, those two fellas, are they buddies of Jake's? Oh, well, you know Jake knows everybody's been around here. <laughs> well, I guess I should say that everybody knows him. Yeah. Used to be a fighter in the ring, you know. No, I didn't know. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was really something, he was. You should have seen him. He moved like a machine. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he had it. He had it. He, he did, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Could have been champ, too. Except for the old bottle bug. Well, let you get yourself settled in. Anything you need, just holler, huh? Oh, just, just one second. That guy, Paul, that you said was downstairs. Would that happen to be Paul Thomas? Yeah. You know him? Just to talk to him. Uh... He bunk here? No. A couple of boys sneaked him in last night. But he couldn't make it. He had to take off. He likes to bed down a little place down near Bay Road, usually. A loner, huh? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He likes to watch the water, see the boats. But I, I wouldn't bother him right now, though, if I was you. He, Looks like he's in a pretty bad way. Okay. Thanks for telling me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll see you for supper. Yeah, I'll be down there. Yeah. Fine. Keller? I gotta be quick, Steve. Go. Your Charlie Doe has a last name. D-E-R-M-O-T-T. -T. The other two guys are a Guy Lucas and a Ziggy. Got that? C-I-G-G-Y? That's right. I'll try to get the full name. You check out the other two. Right. Now, what about this guy, Wilson? I don't know yet. He didn't show up for dinner. I'll try to track him down. You got any idea where? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I gotta go. I'll keep in touch. Mike. Who's that? Jake? I don't need any company tonight, Jake. I'm doing fine. Concussion will be okay. Find out who paid us fine and who swung him out of that tank. Cash in an envelope delivered by a messenger. Look what I found in his wallet. That's Paul Thomas. Last name's Cullen. Older guy's his father. He used to own half the boat yards along the coast a couple of years ago. Owned? Past tense? Died two months ago. So the fourth victim was supposed to be a silver spoon type. 
Down to drinking cheap wine and sleeping on cement. Did you talk to him? Doesn't remember anything, didn't see anything. Called Mrs. Kingsley down to the San Pedro place. She says he showed up about a month ago. Said he was in Mexico for about a year. Somebody pays his fine, puts him back out on the street so that he can have his head ripped off. You know what I think? Yeah. The other three killings to cover up one. Right. You keep him in the hospital, private room, man at that door. Find out all you can about his family and friends. Here. I'm going to try to run down Wilson. Right. I like you, Taylor. Yeah, thanks for the quarter. a clause in it regarding divers going into night work. And make certain they understand the contract includes no channel work. What? What does he want? All right, let him come up. Yes, Mr. Richardson. Thank you. Would you like to go up, Inspector? Thank you. Well, the face looks familiar. Guess I should know the name. You might. Oh, I wouldn't. But I think he was a very well-known boxer. Is he a friend of Mr. Richardson's? Mr. Richardson has interest in several fighters. It's been a special interest of his over the years. Uh -huh. Come in. Hello. Inspector Keller. My secretary said it was about traffic violations. Tickets Paul Jr. has been ignoring. Yeah, ever since we tied our computer into the traffic bureau, a lot of trouble. Why don't you send the company the bills? Let us pay the fines. Well, see, the problem is, Mr. Richardson, some of the tickets go back three years. So I'm afraid that Paul Jr. is going to have to see the judge personally. Well, you're going to have a problem there. Jr. left home about three years ago, and we haven't heard from him since. Hmm. Tell you one thing, I sure wish my office had this view. The staff finds it pleasant. You, uh, you live aboard? This time of year. We have crews working around the clock, so I keep myself on call here. Three years? You said nobody's seen him for three years? A bit more, in fact. It was right out here on the pier he had the final argument with his father. The old man was tired of his playboy antics. Told him he'd see his next dime when he put in a day's work. Well, has anybody tried to get in touch with him either through the police or private agencies? If he wants to waste his life, let him. I was dirtying my hands on Cullen barges while Junior was tooling around $10,000 sports cars. While he's drinking himself to death on tequila, I'm up here. I've, uh, I've got a short fuse when it comes to anybody not holding up his end. That's all right. Do you think he's been in Mexico for a while, huh? Mexico? I'm sorry, you said tequila. I thought... Uh... No, that's uh, just an expression. Uh. Don't misunderstand. I'm not angry with Paul personally. It's all the Pauls. The clean fingernail kids with everything handed to them. Well, do you think he's been in touch with his family? It's not likely. He only has a sister. And if you think blood is thicker than water... Listen, Junior is out of my life, and Roy Richardson was never in it. And if he doesn't know that, you can just tell him. And you can also tell him that his big pronouncements really ticked me off. Look, Kathy, why don't we and just And don't give me any of your cheeky babe routine, Terry. I mean, you can just save that for... Hello. Hi. Are you, uh, Kathy Cullen? Yes. Well, you want to come aboard? You're a bit early. No, I was expecting. Hello. Well, you've, uh... You've read the survey and you've seen the specs. Her, um... 
Overall length is 34.9. It's a fine Headley engine, lead keel, and a stainless tank with a cruising range of about... Excuse me, I think you made a mistake. Listen, just uh, let me get it all out front, okay? Now, the price is firm within two or three thousand. No lowball offers. And if that doesn't completely blow the deal, I'll show you below. My name's Keller, Inspector Keller, SFPD. Oh, well, you're certainly not alive. When are you? <laughs> Unless you can set the trade in for a 65 Porsche. Of course, I could throw in three rooms of fake Danish furniture. I got a TV. Only gets color in one station. No baseball cards or trading stamps. Well, I was saving that for the clincher. But I guess I won't buy it, so I better stay with the questions I brought. Like? Traffic violations for your brother. We ran our computer through the traffic bureau and... Uh-uh. No, a traffic rat brings a big guy with a very solemn expression and lots of stripes on his uniform. Not Ivy League and handsome. I've had that house called myself, Inspector. What's happened to Junior? You were hoping you could tell us. All we know is he's missing. <sighs> Giant loss. Sounds like you're not too close. No. Um, been no letters, no phone calls, no get well notes, messages in bottles. I mean, zero communication. But then that's just like when I saw him every day. Well, why do you think he just dropped out? I mean, he had everything. Position, money. Why did he just chuck it? Because Junior's a schlep. No, I mean... Well, the old man, you know, was a bulldozer. Real alley fighter. But Dad just scared Paul to death. The more he pounded him into that square hole, the more he retreated. So he went into the bottle, not business. Yeah. Too bad, too. I mean, he could really have run this yard. Not the way old blood and guts did. <laughs> and not the way I could. But in his own low key, he could have hacked it. You see, I sat with Dad those last months while Junior was staring through his bottle bottoms. I did the whole scene from the book reading to the bedpans. And you know the last words that my father said to me? Where's Paul? Where's my son? And he left him the whole Megillah. Well, it looks like he didn't exactly leave you out in the cold. Oh, no. No, I wasn't. Um, I got treated just like Tinkerbell. You know Tinkerbell? Yes. It's a girl. So we protect her. We set up a trust fund so that she doesn't blow the whole wad on permanence and pantyhose. And that's why I have to get rid of Celeste. This is that lousy trust fund. And this uh, Roy, uh, Roy Richardson, he's the head of the company right now? Yeah, another schlep. I mean, he was just on the scene. He was available. So Dad put him in the slot hoping Paul would come back. And now he thinks he's in for good. But we know better, right? You can bet your badge. Tinkerbell's revenge, right? Something like that. You have to get back to punching doorbells right away? Something like that, yeah. Okay. To keep in touch. I, mean, I might want to talk about your 65 Porsche. I might like to talk to you about it. Okay. Yes, Doctor. Yes. I'll see to it. Excuse me, Paul Thomas, what room is he in? At the end of the... I, I'm sorry, sir. There's no admittance to Mr. Thomas's room. Right. Yes?
She had the motive, all right. All she needed was somebody to do the rough stuff. Remember that guy I told you was on the boat with her? Yeah. Talked to the dock master. Turns out he had a couple of pro fights. Name's Terry Benner. Big guy? Yeah, 2 two ten. He had the motive and means. Just like Richardson and Wilson. Yeah, big Jake. So now we're in a scramble for control of the company, eh? And the key seems to be Cullen. But the wild card is Jake Wilson. We don't know whether he's with us or against us. called for help. I ran down, ripped the tape off of the guy's mouth, and burned it back up here as soon as he described who it was put him away. Anybody else see him? Yeah, a couple of interns. They gave the same description. It was Wilson, all right. Okay. Sorry, Lieutenant. I really feel like a dunce. How could you know? Listen, get on the box, put on an APB on both of them. Right away. You know, for a guy who's had his bell rung as many times as this Wilson, he thinks pretty good. Well, if we're on the right track, buddy boy, he's not the head work. He's the muscle. about this same place might not be such a good idea coming back here maybe don't huh? worry about it jay there's two of us that guy's never going after two people at the same yeah, time i know but what i mean is you play the yeah, percentage. i'll get my stash we'll share it uh no no paul no i, I gotta stay dry yeah i gotta put out the fire <laughs> i couldn't have stayed in that room another 10 minutes it was great to see your big ugly face <laughs> You didn't see who it was that hit you? No. Like I told you, first I thought it was you. But I was pretty bummed. I couldn't see you too well. It's gone, Jake. Somebody's oh. been here and they ripped off my stash. Oh. I can't afford to go dry, Jake. Take I need it. it. I can't stand going through that again. Take it easy, kid. I'll get you some. Will you, Jake? Yeah, sure, Can you give sure, me a bottle? sure. Great. And I know a place to go, too, eh? Come on now, we'll go there. Come no, 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 Jake, Jake. Just get me a bottle, okay? That'd be great. But I don't want to... I don't want to do any more running. I mean, like, you know, like those fancy dancies run around the ring trying to stay away from you. <laughs> I mean, how much farther can you run in this? You ain't scared of me, huh? Hey? No, the only thing that scares me is that it's coming on fast. Unless I get something to drown it. All right, all right. I'll be right back. Hurry up. Inspectors 8-1 to headquarters. 10-4-8-1, go ahead. What about the APB on a Jake Wilson and Paul Thomas, a.k.a. Paul Cullen? Negative 8-1, we'll keep you posted. 10-4. I was thinking, if Wilson's got Paul and he's our man, he wouldn't take him back to the same place, would he? Well, I'd hate not to go and then go back later and find him in a heap.
behind that red car. Jake. Paulie's after Paulie. Who? I don't know. I've never seen him before. face, though. It's the guy on the boat with Kathy Cullen, Benner. So it was him and the sister, huh? Yeah. Was he working over? Wilson. How is he? Not too good. He told the kid to make a run for it while he held off a couple of brass knucks. Listen, get an ambulance, will you? All right. Jake, an ambulance is on the way. Just hang on, fella. Cop. I knew there was something about you. Yeah, like. we'll talk about that later. Take but it easy. He's a kid. He'll be okay. Don't he's worry. He's a good kid. Don't talk. He don't belong down here. Take it easy. Don't talk much. All he wanted was somebody to talk to. You know, that's all that anybody wants. Maybe. Don't talk, Jake. Don't talk now. You know, just somebody to talk to. Uh, Take it easy, Jake. Here, I'll get him down. Just show them. And then get on that box and see if they picked up that Cullen dame yet. Jake. Help! Help! Can you guys help me out for just a second? There's a friend of mine in trouble over there. It's really serious. Please, come on. Can you help me well, just for a second? Is that your buddy? Charges. What charges? Murder. Where's Terry Benner? Terry Benner? You put me with Terry Benner and you come up with murder? Four counts and one attempted against your own brother. That is crazy. Why would I want to kill Paul? Well, we were talking this afternoon. There was no love lost. Did I say anything about wanting him dead? You said a mouthful about revenge. And Benner was there just before you said it. Wait a minute. You think Terry did these things? We can prove it. Well, then you should be talking to Roy, not to me. Roy Richardson? Yes. He sent Terry over here this afternoon to tell me not to talk to anybody about Paul's tickets. We don't buy it, Miss Cullen. But it's true. I mean, you, you can check it out. He's one of Roy's fighters that didn't make it. He works for him. You think that I... I would want to kill my own brother? And you say that there is no love lost. Well, that is not true. It all got lost somewhere but he is still my brother Benner if you'd only once do what I ask you to do you killed him didn't you Roy and you killed all of them 
Put that down, Paul. You had him do it for you, didn't you? You thought nobody'd notice. Nobody'd care. Just one more drunken bum turns up when there's so many of them dying the same way. Put it down. No, I'm gonna bury it right in your head. The same way you had him hammer them all to death. Why, Roy? The money? The business? You knew I never wanted it. You knew that. Your father left it to you anyway. I couldn't chance your crawling out of your bottle someday to claim what I've earned. Earned? For killing defenseless old men in an alley? Men that never hurt anyone? That just wanted to be alone? Some people might say I did the city a favor. The city might have something to say about that. I know I do. All right, get him out of here. Paul, I'm Inspector Keller. This is Lieutenant Stone. Well, maybe we can have that cup of coffee now, Paul. <laughs> Jake was sure that it was you. I know, and I was sure it was Jake. We were both wrong. <laughs> the big thing now is to prove that Jake wasn't wrong about you. What does that mean? Well, he went the distance for you. Must figure you're worth something. Yeah, but how do you prove something like that? We try. And we keep the right people in our corners. Special guest star, James Wainwright. Tonight's episode, Before I Die. do me a favor. You kidding? You know it. You, uh, take care of this for me? Left the trial, okay? You got it. Anything else? Oh, no, just, uh, put it in a safe place. Sully will know where to pick it up when I want it back. Don't worry about a thing. Whenever you're ready, just ask for it. It's yours. <laughs> Looks like action, Mary. You getting it? Yeah, yeah, I got it.
You get that briefcase he was carrying. Yeah, I zoomed right in on it. That's the Academy Award shot, Dad. He's running, John. Inspector 73 to headquarters. I'm operating a stakeout vehicle and pursuing a felony suspect. At the moment, I'm heading south on 3rd from 20th, pursuing a turquoise coupe, California license 883, Ida Nelly Baker. Request backup units. Move it. So we got some evidence, but that doesn't explain all the craziness. It does for me. Doesn't it for you? No, not for a guy that's been working on the job for 32 years. I mean, I I wouldn't call it professional behavior, that's all. You know how long he's been working the drop out Royce? A year and a half. One year and a half watching a cobra like Royce lie, buy, threaten his way out of one charge after another. Now, you've always told me if it doesn't fit, it wasn't a good collar. Wrong. Dead wrong, buddy boy. That uh, bribery thing with the liquor license? Yeah. And the phony pension plan? And what about last summer, that Shylock in case they had on him last summer? Oh, Gold-plated, yeah. wasn't it? Whatever happened to that one? What happened? The witness took a cab. You figure it out. No, I'm just saying that an old harness bull like John T. Connor, he's going to think about what those things do to people. How they feel about the law, how they feel about him. Mike, y'all set? 
Sorry to hang out. Had to get an X-ray. Got a sore rib. That's where he gave the shoulder. It was you. I felt more like Dick Butkus. I see why you hang around with him now. That's it. He's the brains. I'm just the muscle. Uh, you mind if we push it? I want to get to the courthouse. Hey, muscle. You heard what the man said? Let's get him to the courthouse. Your obvious contempt for these proceedings, Mr. Royce, only demonstrates again how lightly you regard the rules the rest of us live by. As a citizen of this community, every instinct I have is to let this case go to trial. But I'm here as a judge, Mr. Cappiello, and in that capacity, I have to tell you that I am no longer moved by your promises to present additional evidence. I hope you suggest to the district attorney that in the future he waits until he has the evidence before he decides to prosecute this defendant again. On the motion to dismiss, granted. What do you mean if what was in that briefcase hadn't have been burned? I don't know. You heard him. Look, I know what I heard. I still want to know what happened. You didn't come through, Connor. You're all mouth. You shoot blanks. What do you want me to tell you? Listen, you got an indictment. You didn't get that on fairy tales. Who says I didn't? You? What do you know? What makes you think you even begin to know the bells that go off in this town every time you do your famous I've got Al Royce dead to rights number? Hey, except for the fact that he did it. Nobody flaked him, pal. He's guilty. Now, how about that for something? Who's this? Another one of our merry pranksters from the police department? Why don't you admit it, Capiello? You blew it. You couldn't cut it. You really want to know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. You came up with about enough solid evidence to get a naughty boy expelled from school, plus a lot of cheap talk about more. And your timing, Connie, your timing's terrific. I mean, just when everybody's making noises about appointing a special prosecutor, you walk in saying, hey, look what I've got. OK, we took it to the grand jury, we did our little tap dance, and here we are. Now the case looks like a grandstand play, Connor. Politics. Maybe you could have turned it serious, and maybe I'm a jerk for believing that you could do it, but you didn't. And that's the last time I go up against Royce while some cop is out there barbecuing my case. Yeah. You got an indictment! Ah, yeah. oh, come on, John. He's just a wise guy. He'll be glad hand us like off. Hey! Hey. Hey, you all right? Yeah, yeah. Just dizzy, that's all. Because that shot I took this morning took more out of me than I thought. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Whew. <laughs> Maybe. Mr. Connor, what you have is called an aneurysm. Actually, that's a kind of a, a little balloon that sometimes occurs when the wall of a blood vessel becomes a little too thin. A balloon? <laughs> that bad, huh? Well, that's not good. I knew I shouldn't have come up here for those x-rays. What do we do about it? Well, there's an operation. You know, the trouble is... Your little balloon should have been taken out a long time ago. It's, uh, it's quite advanced. And it happens to be in a, in a part that is very difficult to get at. Well, if you can't operate, you can't operate. Well, I didn't say we couldn't operate. Just trying to explain the, uh, risks involved in your case. You know, I, uh, I showed this x-ray to two of the very finest surgeons in the business, Mr. Connor. And? Well, they didn't like the odds. Well, what else is there? I'm afraid there's not a great deal more. Well, what are you trying to tell me, Doctor? The likelihood is that that little balloon I was telling you about, sooner or later, is the first. And what? You die from it? Yeah, almost at once. Oh, dear God. I, I, uh, sooner or later, you said. Yeah, well, it could be, uh, several months. 
Look, the truth is, it could happen almost any time. Well, you were talking about the operation now. I mean, uh, well, if you were me, what would you do? Would you take it? Frankly, if it was me, I think I'd get the most out of whatever time has left me. Before I die. Frankly, it was me. I think I'd get the most out of whatever time has left me. How about that, huh? Come on, sweetheart. Give me a take, will you? Sully, you got about two hours. Go over the north side, check out spots one and three, see what... Over I'm... here, Al! and it gets away. And that's when I look and I see that Sully, uh, God rest him, had been shot. Terrible thing. I told him all this left though. You can't describe the car? No. New, old, dark light, anything. Sorry, I can't help you, Lieutenant. Uh, uh, what did you say your name was again? Stone. Yeah, yeah, Stone, that's right. Well, like I was saying, uh, Lieutenant Stone, I can't tell you a thing, but I want you to know. And I want you to tell the people downtown that I really appreciate everything you're trying to do. We can't have people taking shots at our most influential citizens. Are you trying to tell me that this, this gunman was trying to kill me? Yeah, it crossed my mind. But not yours? Well, not a million years, no. Well, just out of curiosity, can you tell me why your driver was carrying a gun? Did he do that? Uh-huh. He had a holster. Well, I heard they didn't even find any gun. Well, did you hear about the two spent shells? Two? <laughs> Here I was, ready to swear the uh, guy only fired once. He did. They were different calibers. 
Well, that's what they mean when they say that eyewitness testimony is not very reliable. You know, you have enemies. Who are they? Me? I don't have any enemies. I don't mean people who hate your guts. I mean people who want to kill you. As far as I know, I'm Mr. Lovable. We'll let you know if we need you. Yeah, beautiful. You do that. I'll count on it. Did you give him the cop? I didn't give him anything. That doesn't mean I want him running around. Hey, Al, a cop. What's the matter? Cops don't have accidents? What'd you say your name was? Well, you didn't like that, didn't you? <laughs> Doesn't like letting us know what he thinks of us, huh? Well, I'm not too choked up about him either. Ah, uh -huh, Lieutenant, professional detachment, remember? Yeah, I remember. Tell you, it's strange, though, when you think about it. I mean, you could argue that who's ever gunning for Royce is trying to do us a public service, and we're trying to stop him. Well, now you know what got John T. so steamed up the other day. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. That's the guy we ought to talk to. I mean, he'd know if Royce crossed somebody, right? No way. No way. I thought you told me John T. wrote the book on Royce. He did. But he's not here to read it to us. Where is he? Had to go to Portland, some kind of family emergency. He didn't leave a number? No, Schindler said he'd call the minute he got there. So far, nobody's heard of him. saying was that I had a good and I didn't know it. What's wrong with that? Oh, no, come on. You're saying that you're sorry. No, I'm Or something. Not. Yes, you are. You don't owe me anything. Look, you said, let's get married. And I said, great idea. I knew what I was doing. Yeah, and you knew what you were doing when you walked out on me. That's the smartest move you ever made. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. Come on. Don't hold it in. Come on, say it. <laughs> you, you are something else, Ro. You know what I want to tell you? You know all the times that I, uh, that I didn't show up and I didn't call you? You know, that had nothing to do with you. Never another woman. Why? What do you mean? Why are you telling me this now? Oh, I don't know. Just wanted to tell you. Elizabeth, I knew there wasn't another woman. I knew there was a job and me. In that order. I knew that. Oh. Oh, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Hey, 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 I gotta get back to work. I can't no, sleep. Hey, let's go up to my place. No, I tell you what. I'll come by this evening for dinner. We'll make an evening of it. All no, right? Let's go now. No, no, no. I'm. I got something I've got to do first. Now you stay right here, and I'll get the car. I'll go with you. You stay here. I'll get the car. I'll be right back. Yes, 
Yes. Are you all right? Johnny, don't move. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm all right. Easy. I'm okay. I'll call an ambulance. No. But you've been hurt. Don't do anything. You hear what I said? I'm okay. Uh, let's see. I've got your name, address, age, residency. Now, uh, have you ever committed a felony? No. Uh -huh. Any history of mental illness? No. That's a beauty, isn't it? It's one of the most powerful lightweight weapons made. How much is this again? Uh, Three hundred dollars plus tax. Yes, yeah, fine. Give me a box of shells too. Hmm. You have to give Royce credit. He can really turn him out in style. I thought the mad rush in there was supposed to have retired and left town. And there's Fast Freddy. The one on the end there, that's Mama Lacus. Numbers in prostitution. He and Royce are supposed to be having some kind of feud. How bad? Oh, I don't think anybody will start shooting, but you never know, you know what I mean? Oh, John T's gonna get pretty sore if he finds out a young punk put Royce away before he could. Ah, uh, he'll get over it. <laughs> he like Ahab, finding out his white wheel got landed by somebody in a fishing boat. Ah, oh, that's bad. It's pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, can you stop that? Yeah, here. What did you see? I'm not sure. Murray, take it back the other way, will you? Okay, there you go. Now, keep going. Right there. You see him in the car? No, wait, he went too far. Take it back the other way. Freeze it. Right there. Hey, what's he doing there? It's him. It's John T. I thought you said he was in Portland. Somebody in the family was sick, is that it? His sister. He called me on the phone. He said he was at the airport. He had to get her in the hospital. Well, then he couldn't be there. But he is. Try his number. Yeah. Pretty good eye, buddy boy. But right now, you wish I was nearsighted. I don't know why I didn't even see him there. Because you were staked out on a funeral, not some car down the block. He isn't there. Murray! What's this, a stakeout? How was Portland? Oh, that's all right for ducks. I'll take the fog over the rain any time, John. You want to tell me that wasn't you sitting outside the church? Oh, yeah, that was me. How'd you find out? Well, it's kind of a long story. But the punchline is I found out about it along with half the department. We were filming it, you know. And later I'm doing the blow-by-blow blow and pointing out the celebrities, and there's my partner. Just sitting there like he belonged there. And I'm standing in the squad room with my bare face hanging out, trying to explain why I didn't know anything about it. That's it? That's what you're steamed up about? <laughs> yeah, I got a little frosty, but that's not half of what's bothering me right now. You weren't even going to tell me, were you? What's going on, John? Well, maybe you better tell me. I got to check with you before I do anything now. I came back, I heard about the funeral, and I swung over to cover it, that's all. Man, it's me, remember? You can do that number on somebody else's head, but not on mine, all right? 
Now, you went there alone because you didn't want me there. All I'm asking you is why not? This doesn't concern you, Murray. Doesn't concern me. Man, I stay alive because I know what you do, how you do it, and when you do it. I can't count on that I'm a dead man, John. Now, you told me that when I first walked into your office and took off that blue shirt, before we even shook hands. I think all these years, buys me a straight answer, John. I never gave you anything but a straight answer. Now, this doesn't concern you. What, you think I blew it with Royce? Did I do something, drop the ball, what? It's got nothing to do with you. This is something I gotta do alone. That's the way you wanna leave it. That's the way I'd like you to leave it. There's nobody else I'd buy that from, you know that. I'll be downtown. Fine, Rosemary, just fine. Oh, Mike. It's been a long time. It sure has. I don't know, you just never get to see the people you want to see, and you see too much of the people you don't want to see. True. <laughs> Besides, I didn't want to make John T. jealous. That'd be the day, huh? Have you seen him recently? You know, don't you, Mike? I'll be outside if you need me, Liz. All morning, I kept feeling like I was the only one that knew that. How much did he tell you? He didn't want to tell me at all. I fixed dinner for him. This was last night? Yes, it was. Well, what else happened last night? While I was cooking, you know, he kept laughing and joking around. But anybody who knows him as well as I do, could tell that it wasn't natural. And then later he started to shake. Shake. You know, like he was cold. He cried. And I held him, told him that I loved him. Because he cried. <laughs> because it's human to cry. And it's human to share. And that's when he told me that he was going to die. Now, now, wait a minute. What's all this about dying? You didn't. No, I didn't know. I shouldn't have told you, Mike. I shouldn't have told well, what's you. What's the matter with him? Why is he going to die? Well, there's nothing you can do for him. Just let him alone, please, Mike. All please. right, it'll be all right. I'll take you home. No, I don't want to go home. You sure? Yes, I do a better here. Mike, you came here for some reason. Why? What was it? Well, I knew that he's been acting funny lately. I couldn't put my fingers on it. I couldn't understand it. I... No, I think I do. Oh, yes. Um, excuse me, but I'll keep in touch with you, Lowe. Shoney. Grab the cab back to headquarters. I don't know who's on duty, but whoever it is, tell them I want a 24-hour surveillance on Royce. What? I'll fit you in later. Oh, and listen, pass the word. If anyone sees John T, tell them I want to know about it. <laughs> Just getting these clothes down to the goodwill. You know how the stuff collects. 
can I do for you? It was about this morning. I've already talked with Murray. I got up there and my sister wasn't in a bad office. They thought so. You know, I got a nurse for her and I shot on back here. How about you, John? How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, you know. No complaints. Now, what do you mean? I mean, I just talked to Rosemary. She told me you've got some crazy idea. You think you're dying. Crazy idea, huh? Uh-huh. Well, it's a fact, Mike, and I know it. What do you know? Are you a doctor? I've been to a doctor. Well, get yourself a specialist. I've been to specialists. What do you think I am, a dummy, Mike? Look, I appreciate what you're saying, but... This thing... No doubt about it. I'm sorry, John. You know, it's a funny thing when my father died, I remember. The worst part about it was getting all the stuff cleared up afterwards, you know, the clothes. And so I just thought I'd get rid of these and... And then maybe I'll uh, go and take that hunting trip. You remember the one I said I was always going to take and I never did get around to it. <laughs> John. John, I really came to ask you about that shooting the other night. Royce's bodyguard. Oh, you on that, huh? Uh, Butcher Sullivan? Well, that, that could be almost anybody. I figured the fellow was after Royce. Sullivan got in the way. Yeah, it's possible. Where were you? Well, what kind of a question is that? A lousy one. I hate it. But I'm... I'm still gonna have to check the slug from your gun against the one they pulled out of Sullivan. Hey, Mike. That's right. All right. I took a shot at Royce, so what? He's filthy, spits on his shield. If I had time, Mike, I'd put him away, but I don't. Somebody else will. Yeah, but I don't know that, see? And I'm not going to take the chance. I'm going to kill him. Because the way I figure it, that's the least I can do. Now, like, who has nothing to lose? Mike, it makes sense. Come on, all you have to do is say you didn't find me. Then I'll do it, I'll turn myself into you. I swear I'll do that. What do you say? Don't make me answer that. Yeah. It's kind of stupid, isn't it? Yeah, good cop, Mike. <laughs> say that it's true. I'm not buying it, but let's say that it is. All I'm asking here is let's not forget about who the man is. I mean, 32 years in the department. Now, that should entitle him to a little consideration. That's Nobody it. likes it any more than you do, Murray. Oh, come on, Steve. I know where you're at. You're saying he's a rogue cop. Forget about what might be going through his mind. Yeah, yesterday, he was one of the boys, one of the old-timers, one of the best, right? Hey, you can't wait to crucify him. No, I didn't say that. Well, what are you saying, man? You feeling sorry for Al Royce? Well, I'm sorry too, man. Everybody knows Al Royce is a victim of his environment. Well, what do you want to do? You want to issue Connor a hunting license. I don't know, did I miss something? Or was there an announcement making us executioners and John T. Connor gets to fire the first shot because of his long devoted service or something? Okay. Okay, okay now, okay. What we've got to do is to find Royce before Connor does. And Murray. I'm counting on your help. To save who, Royce or John? Both. Now, the best thing any of us can do for John T is to find Royce and get him undercover. And Connor knows more about Royce than we do, that's all. Well, let's get going, huh? Look, Steve. Murray. <laughs> Murray. Forget it. There are just some things you can't forget, you know? I 
I've spent 12 years of my life handcuffed to that guy. Do you think he wants to forget that, too? Maybe what he's doing now, he doesn't want to rub off on you. Come on. Inspectors 8-1-10-4. Alert all units in the area. Get out of there, John T. Okay, he's still looking. Where would he go next? Who knows? All right, check the list again. St. Francis Barbershop, zero. Nicky's Hideaway, zilch. Zilch. Continental Bass, nothing. 30 I wonder what that is. Waterfront Cafe, zero. Say, there's a horse called Betty O, isn't there? I'm sure there is. Yeah, John T. told me that once. Royce says into that. What, he owns a horse? Well, it's not anything big with him, but with something. But, uh, peace, that's what he said. He owns a piece. This must be the name he told me. San Mateo police on the way. You look for Royce, right? That's the idea. Uh, 
guy downstairs said I can get to the roof this way. What's going on? I uh, was just looking for a guy. Thank you. There's a sky right Ladies and gentlemen, the results of the sixth race are official. The winner, number four, lucky fellow with Jimmy Newcomb up, followed by number nine, so long. The show horse, number six, Riot Red. hang out. Clubhouse. Look, they got a horse running down by the paddock. Steve, take the paddock. Say, where's the other fellow? Who? You mean the guy that just came through here a couple minutes ago? Yeah, what did he look like? About my age, uh, gray hair. Which way did you say he went? He went up to the roof. That door right up there. John! I gotta do it, Murray. John! right in with him. Sure. Look who takes the limo. So close. Did it ever cross your mind? What? Ah, no. No, go on. No, no, I was just curious. Why? Did you think about it? No, no, he's not immune. He'll get his. But what happened back there, it really uh, didn't have very much to do with justice. But had a hell of a lot to do with the use of power. The man and his gun. Just isn't the answer. 
Are you tempted? Buddy boy. That's between me and John T. But you know what? What? What Murray did is what I'd want you to do if that had been me. guest star, Mark Hamill. Tonight's episode, Innocent No More. Okay, look, you stick with Billy. I'll show you what to do. Okay, now, 20 minutes, no more. You guys understand? Okay, come on, let's split up. Let's go. Come on. Your age overwhelms my cake. Oh, it isn't, huh? No. Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> good to have you home. Oh, it's good to be home. So, what do you want to do? Open up your presents or eat first? Do I have a choice? Nope. The specialty of the house is waiting, and I don't want it to dry out. So, you open the wine, and I'll get hey, it Hey, what specialty are you making? Wait a minute, I don't get so nosy. Mm. Something really terrific. <laughs> what was that? What? I thought I heard something. Never mind. Open the wine. Put on a record. Russian music. Oh. That's a hint. Oh. Hey, I've got a surprise for you, too. You better set another plate. All right. I only made enough for two. I guess I should have fed him first, huh? Well, I guess he took care of that. He was sniffing your Kiev. Not mine, but yours. Where'd he come from? And Mrs. Harper down the street. She was going away for the weekend, and she needed a sitter. And you volunteered. Do you mind? No, no, no. Does he have a name? <laughs> Little Darling. <laughs> Corny, huh? Yeah, like Mrs. Harper. 
Well, for this weekend, you're going to be called fella. Hmm? <laughs> I'll put him away. Now you tell us where the money box is, lady. Oh, no. Or he's going to burn your treasure. No, please. It's not where's the money, lady? Only Come on, where's the money? No. Where is the money, lady? I don't have time for this. Think uh, fast, lady. Upstairs. Come on. Upstairs where, lady? Come on. Closet. Closet. Where in the closet, lady? Show box. All right, come on. Let's go. Here. Uh -oh. Wouldn't make much of a bonfire anyway. It's past 20 minutes. Let's go. Man, we got our money. We're not leaving yet. Now, her husband is a jeweler. This says so. He must have given her lots of little gifts, rings, stuff like that. They've got to be around here someplace. Lady... Now, you best tell me where they are. Hey, Bill, are you crazy? Stop it, man. She can't tell you nothing. Listen, somebody must have called the cops. Let's get out of here. See my PO. You'll see him, kid. Paul T. Brown, age 15. Here's his sheet. About an hour ago, they hit three houses on the south side. Only this time, somebody died. Her name's Mrs. Helen King. 65. She had a coronary. Was she beaten? We don't know. How many do you have in custody? Two. Both juvenile. One of them's no problem. He's got eight priors. They caught him with a shiv. We're gonna slap him with parole violation. What about the other one? Well, he's sweet 16. Good-looking, well-mannered, real boy scout. Go on. Well, so far, Mike, the evidence is pretty skimpy. Boy's father's here to take him home. All right, so what's the big problem? The boy's father's Bob Wilson. That's right, building contractor, ex-city supervisor, and so he says, a real close friend of yours. You know, Mike, when I was his age, I was laying brick for 40 cents an hour. Hard work was something to be proud of. Today, <laughs> today it's a crime. We've gone wrong somewhere, haven't we? All of us. Nowadays, if a kid wants something, all he has to do is just ask for it. Now, look, Mike, Billy didn't steal anything. He doesn't have to. Mike, I know my son. I know my son just as well as you know your daughter. He is innocent. Did you know that your boy was out tonight? Yeah, he went out to see a friend. Paul Brown? I don't think that they know each other. They go to the same school. Well, now, that's guilt by association. But I guess that's the way that it is, huh? I mean, this whole new system, huh? Bussing kids from one area to another area, mixing the hardened criminals with kids like Billy. Oh, I'm not saying that Billy's perfect. No, he's had his share of schoolyard scraps. But basically, Mike, believe me, he is a very good boy. Bob, what do you expect me to do? Talk to the DA. Have him drop the charges. In the interest of, of justice, say. I think he means as a personal favor. Hold it. What about the other boy? The one with the knife? Should I let him go, too? I don't care. Mr. Wilson, that lady was murdered. My son had nothing to do with that. Look, Mike, please. The kid, he's only 16. Bob, you don't seem to understand. There are no criminal charges. The juvenile court is just a civil proceeding. I want all proceedings dropped. How can I do that? How can I hold on to one suspect and let the other one go? Sure. Sure, sure. I get the message. I get the message. No favors. Do you have a lawyer? Don't bother. I'll have Harry Clark handle it. You know, I thought I had a friend.
I'll say one thing for him. He buys the best. Harry Clark will have that kid out before lunch. Stinks, doesn't it? What? The poor go to jail and the rich go home? Not just that. The whole juvenile system. If Billy Clark were 21 and guilty of felony murder, he'd be put away for life. But because he's young of age and supposedly innocent of mind, he'll get his wrist slapped, three months of probation, and be free to kill again. It's a laugh. Nobody's laughing. That's why these games like the Jackals exist. Because the law's a joke to them. Take a look at this. In just two months, that one lousy gang has committed 42 acts of robbery, assault, burglary, felony animal torture, and now murder. And all against the old and the defenseless, and all in the same two-mile area. They may not be brave or bold, but they're sure as hell not afraid of the law. I take it you have a suggestion. No. Just lots of anger. Well, I do. Let's go home. Tomorrow morning, I'll check with the DA and find out what our chances are for getting criminal indictments against any of that gang we arrest. Meanwhile, how do I handle the Wilson case? Routinely. He could be innocent. Dan, are you talking about Billy Wilson? Yeah, what do you got? Plenty. His prints were everywhere inside the King house. Billy Wilson's as guilty as sin. No, sir. I didn't know why they were chasing me. I was really scared. I mean, I, I told the officer I was on my way to see a friend of mine, Roger Santini, but he wouldn't listen. All right, let's get back to the fingerprints. Well, like I told Mr. Clark, I sell newspaper subscriptions door to door. Extra money. So I was in the house a couple, three days ago. Gee, she was a real nice lady. Did she buy any? Mike. No, she didn't. Most of the time, she was just showing me things. She had a lot of antiques. She sure did, all over the house. All right, son. Thanks. Well, I'll see the judges and read the probation report. Don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Thank you. Right. Nice kid. Intelligent, soft-spoken, sincere. I think you're making a mistake. Oh, come on. Do you really believe all that stuff about him selling subscriptions and all that? I'm paid to. That's what I like about you. Mike, why press? The lady died of a heart attack. The DA couldn't get manslaughter on her. Now, why don't you go and tell that to her husband? That's where I'm going now. Would you like to join me? You yeah, sure? We'll have a man take you downtown and should take a statement from you. Thank you. Mike, we got a break. An eyewitness. The guy was driving past last night when he almost hit one of the kids running out of the house. Was it the Wilson kid? No, it wasn't Brown either. A kid named Tommy Ditto. He ID'd him from these mug shots. Did you pick the boy up? I'm still looking for him. I put a stake out in the house. Anything else? Well, the lab guys inside found a strand of hair. Could be Wilson's. You think he's guilty? Mike, I did some more checking with R and I. And like I said, the kid's never been convicted, but he's been arrested five times. Suspicion of assault, battery, grand theft, and one for extortion. The last one got him suspended from school for a month. The kid's got a history of violence, and the old man's covering up for him. The body was right over there, tied with a nylon guitar string. Could be a lead. That's the husband. Mr. King? Mr. King, this is Lieutenant Stone, head of homicide. We'll be out of here soon. You know, I was out for the evening. Is there anything I can do? Do you know who they were? Well, we have several boys in custody. I understand. It's, it's hard to prove a case. Whatever the law says, it's God's will. They're only children. One can't blame them. They're only children. I don't know if I would. Yo, Max, 
Let me know how you make out with that strand of hair and the guitar string as soon as you can, will you? Oh, listen, wait a minute. Why don't you stay here with them? If they pick up that Dito kid, let me know immediately. Mike, have you got a minute? I know what you want, Carl. You want a state. Well, I don't have one for you. Well, somebody better start speaking out. You know, we're doing another TV editorial on these teenage gang attacks, and people are pretty uptight. Now, do you have any comment at all on those two that were arrested last night? No, they're being processed normally. Uh, processed or handled, Mike? What are you getting at? Well, I got a call this morning from Judge Brewster, who just happens to be presiding over the juvenile docket this month. Yes, I know who he is. Yes, well, do you also know that he's a close golfing buddy of Bob Wilson's? Anyway, he's threatened to place a gag order on the case if our broadcast as much as mentions the name of a suspect. Now, that seems to me as if the defendants have a lot of friends in court. It's about time the victims had some friends in court, too, don't you think? Yeah, but what if they pick me up? So what? They can't do nothing. Henry, that lady died. So tell the judge you're sorry. Come on, man. There's nothing to worry about, okay? So cool it. No, Billy's in jail, man. They're going to be asking him a Look, lot of questions. Man, Billy can take care of himself. Polly, too. Hey, you, you think I wouldn't do something if they tried to give him a hard time? Man, that's my brother we're talking about. I know. Hey, come on. You, you just worry about uh, You share the cut, all right? Let me worry about the cops. Hey, man, they can't touch us. Mr. Billings' office. Oh, yes, Judge. Mike, I'm with you. That's why the DA wants me to handle minute, the please. case. But I'm not going to charge these kids with felonies unless the case is strong enough. Your office is getting some pressure, huh? Well, you better believe it. Jerry. Good morning, Carol. Oh, it's a new hairdo. It's a new wig. You really are old-fashioned. This is Judge Brewster, second time around. Tell him I'll call him back. Anything else? Yes, you have an appointment with Carlton at 4, and Harry Clark wants to set up a luncheon with you. Well, I'll bet he does. Now, uh, Jerry, can I see you? Well, the public defender's office has got a complaint, right? Okay, Jake, I'll be with you in a minute. Carol, see if you can get me the name of that principal at Carlson High School. Come on in, Mike. Judge Brewster, can he call you back in just a moment? You talk about pressure. Eight o'clock this morning, I'm still shaking. Guess who calls? Brewster. Right. <laughs> morning, Jerry. How's the golf game? I said, fine, fine. So we talked about sports for about five minutes before he finally got down to the point. He says, listen, Jerry, I understand you people are thinking about petitioning a few juvenile cases back to county for felony trial. I said, well, Jerry, I just want to make sure you understand it's discretionary with the court. I could just hear the wheels turning. Yeah, and that's not all. Guess who he's assigned to the cases? Judge Mildred Burns will be the hearing officer, the most lenient judge he could find. Somebody's scared, Mike. You're right, somebody is scared. Mildred Burns, she's fair, though. I've known her for a long time. Why don't you take a look at this? There's some things in there you should know about Billy Wilson. Come in. The principal's name is Joseph Hess, and our dedicated public defender is still waiting. Here, Mike. Yeah, I know. What does Jake want? He wants equal time for his client, Paul Brown. If Wilson is released, then he wants his boy to go free, too. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Everybody goes free. Nobody's responsible, right? Now, Mike, take it easy. I'll take it easy. You just make sure that the probation officer gets copies of those. Where are you going? Try and find out who Billy Wilson really is. And if he's guilty of murder, he's going to stand trial just like everybody else. Donald? This is Lieutenant Stone, Donald. Just let him see it. There's nothing to be frightened of. Billy Wilson did that? No one saw him do it, so it couldn't be proved. He stole money to give the Wilson boy for three weeks before it came out. Donald, would you be willing to tell the judge how you got those scars? Good. All right, Donald, you can get back to the game now. Thank you. 
I told Mrs. Wilson the whole story, but of course she wouldn't believe it. What about Mr. Wilson? Oh, I don't know what he believes. I tried to talk to him several times, but he always denies the reality. Anyway, I expect Billy hasn't conned. He's bright enough. What do you think makes the boy tick, do you know? Oh. Some kids turn bad because of neglect, others because of they're too spoiled. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist, but I can tell you Billy Wilson's disturbed and violent. I saw him attack more than one boy out here. When I call him on it, he blames somebody else, denies any responsibility. Truth is, I guess he just doesn't care. Victor 8-1, do you read? Mr. Hess, will you be willing to testify? I mean, about the boy's character. Yes, of course. I'll have the DA get in touch with you. Inspector 8-1. Inspectors 8-1, go ahead. Mike, we've located the Dito boy, 31st and Charles. Better get over here. What's going on? He's on the rooftop, threatening to jump. <laughs> He's pretty scared. Did you read him his rights? Yeah, first thing. He's ready to talk. He's already blaming everything on Billy Wilson. How old is he? 16. Look, on what charge? First degree murder. I want that whole gang of hoodlums charged as adults. They're not children anymore, not when they maim and torture people. No, sir. I want them all put away for as long as the law will allow. I understand the court's reluctance to have any child taken from the juvenile system. It's a good one. And for most young boys, it would help them rehabilitate themselves. But not in this instance, Your Honor. You have the history of his arrest, testimony of a school principal, and an injured child as to his true character, all attesting that Billy Wilson would not be amenable to anyone's guidance. Now, most of that is hearsay. There is no direct evidence that he ever... We had have plenty of direct evidence if that's what you want, counsel. Enough to show a presumption of guilt. We have the testimony of the arresting officers, his fingerprints, a strand of hair at the site, and even a confession from one of his I gang... I object. That confession was not only coerced, it's been repudiated. All right, we're not in a criminal trial, Mr. Clark. We're only here to see if the boy can be helped. Lieutenant Stone, you don't make many appearances in this court. Have you some special interest in this case? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Not in this case alone, but in all cases dealing with gang violence by juveniles. Your Honor, I don't think the issue here is rehabilitation. I don't know whether Billy Wilson can be helped or not. But I do know that if we don't make the punishments match the crimes, if we don't show these vicious juveniles that they can't get away with murder, then there's no system of law that can govern this city. None except the law of the jungle. Your Honor, may I say something? No, Harry, you may not. I think we've heard your best arguments. And, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, I think you've been less than candid about the past conduct of your son. The scars on that boy's back and the honesty of his words convince me that he hasn't lied about your son. I'm well aware that these street gangs have become more violent than ever. And I agree with you, Lieutenant that these brutal, lawless attacks on the most vulnerable in our society must stop. Now, I don't know whether you're a member of such a gang. I can only assume by the accusations before me that you are. In any case, the evidence has convinced me that you're not a fit and proper subject for juvenile jurisdiction. I therefore hold that you be remanded to the adult division for criminal proceedings. <laughs> Okay, Jerry, off the record, maybe I agree with you. These gangs are not a sociological problem, they're criminal. But why'd you have to pick the Wilson kid to kick it off? He came up first, Harry. Simple as that. Nothing's that simple, believe me. Now, look, the decision is final. We're going for criminal indictments on all members of that gang. It's your neck. I hear your station's gonna make some kind of an editorial statement about all of this. Uh-huh. On the 3 o'clock news. We're asking for mandatory criminal proceedings against all 16-year-olds. That is, in cases of repeated felonies involving bodily harm. Now, do you have any comment about that, Mike? Oh, I'm not a lawyer. Okay. 
Let me ask you another. I've heard a rumor that two more members of that gang were picked up. Is that true? Yes, it's true. But we don't want it broadcast because we're still looking for the others. No broadcast, okay? Okay. Hello? Who is this? You don't know me, lady. But I know you. I know where you live. And I also know when you're gonna die. Which is gonna be real soon unless my brother's let go. I don't understand. Look, lady, I am talking about the jackals! You just make sure the lieutenant gets my message. I got the message, all right. And now you're gonna get one from me. Nobody goes free. Mike, I know how you feel. So does Billy. Yes, sir, I really do. That's why I wanted you to talk to him. He had nothing to do with that phone call. And he's willing to turn state's evidence. Oh, he is, eh? You recommend total immunity, and Billy will give you the names and addresses of everyone. The whole pack. No deal. And if he's convicted, I'm going to recommend hard time. And you'd better believe it. Half of this station's crimes are being committed by juveniles. And more by children under 15 than by adults over 25. Now, we're speaking of the repeated offenders, the hardcore delinquent who has a history of violence. Grand jury over? Yeah, they voted true bills on three of them, and I think we're going to get John Doe indictments on the rest. You should be discretionary with the courts any longer. Georgia now rules that children of 13 can be tried for serious crimes. New Mexico has lowered the age to 15. But in California, it's still 16. California maintains its position that 16-year-olds are not to be tried by the same laws existing for adults. Makes sense to me. Mike, got a second? Yeah. I need your okay for a search warrant. What for? When I questioned Mrs. Wilson, she said Billy had never owned a guitar. Well, she lied. She bought one about six months ago. Here's a bill for sale. I also found out he took lessons at home. I'd like to look around. All right, it's worth a try. Hey, Mike, line two. Line two. Okay. Homicide, Stone. Guess you didn't get my message, Stone. Maybe this time you'll listen. She's 5'2", short blonde hair, fair complexion. Her name's Jean Stone. Right, I'll hold. I had that frame 20 years ago. Mike, I... I should have sent her off to school. Gotten her out of town. I never thought that... You couldn't know. I knew... Oh, I knew, I knew. He said he knew where she lived and, and, and when she would die. Thank you. Mike, I checked all the hospitals, all the local precincts. There's no word. You know, she could have just gone to visit a friend. Sometimes I wonder why anybody wants to go into public service. Oh. oh, my God. 
No wonder you were so frightened. You oh, must have broken in just after I left. Oh, look at this. It doesn't matter now as long as you're okay. It doesn't matter at all, believe me. Oh, I'm fine. Hey, I think I could use a drink. And you look like you need one. Yeah. There's some wine in the refrigerator. Yeah. Yes. No, you're all right. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'll call downtown and let them know everything's okay. Yeah, you do that, Mike. I think we better lay on a security team just in case. Huh? That's right. Until she gets back to Arizona. for your daughter. almost forgotten how wet it gets out here early in the morning. Mm, feels good, huh? Yeah, sure does. Huh? Well, ready? Huh? Yeah. Let's jog out to the rocks. Okay. Remember when you caught your last ocean perch? Five years? Nope. It was longer than that. You know, I think we ought to try it again this summer. Your mother and I used to come out here regularly. She knew just where to drop the line. Right out there. <laughs> God, we used to come out here all the time, even when I was on the force. Your mother was a sportsman of the family, I'll tell you that. She just loved surf fishing. I don't know how she did it, but every time we came out, she caught something. <laughs> You wish she were here right now, don't you? Well, when she was alive, we had more of a family feeling then for the three of us. Simply hasn't been the same, has it? It has for me. You know, Jeannie, I've been thinking, when you get out of school this year, maybe I ought to turn my badge in. Retire? Why? Well, we could spend more time together. Oh, I see. You want to take care of me the rest of my life, huh? Oh, of course not. <laughs> well, then you're ready to vegetate? No. No, I'm not ready to vegetate. Maybe I just don't want to be in the line of fire anymore. Okay, well, I guess that's up to you. But don't you dare quit on my account. Look, I just think that maybe we ought to be spending more time together, and I can't do that working 24 hours a day. Mike Stone, there is no way you're going to push this off on me. Look, I love you, but I can't live with you acting like a father. Oh, come on, Jeannie. And don't genie me. Look, if I'd wanted a provider and protector, I could have grabbed one a long time ago. So thank you very much. But if you ever retire, you do it when you have a lot better reason than taking care of your little girl. Oh, come on now. You're not the only reason. I'm 56 years old. You know that? 56 years old. And maybe I'm tired of being a, a target for all those dumb teenage psychos. Okay, all right. But that's your decision. You do what you think is right. Only you're responsible, not me. All I can do is worry about you. After all, when you're destitute, the law says children have to support their parents. <laughs> That'll be the day when you have to support me, let me tell you. <laughs> People versus Brim. The defendant ready to make his plea. Yes, Your Honor. Charge is assault with a deadly weapon and resisting an officer. 
How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Bail is set at $2,500. The defendant will be held over to Department 31, February 6th. What are you doing here? Uh, message from the boss. When bail comes up on Wilson, don't argue. What? Next case is People versus Wilson. What are you talking about? It's all arranged. Don't argue. Charge is murder in the first degree. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Request trial by jury. Defendant will be held over to Department 40 on March 10th. The defense renews his motion for bail. Has the district attorney been notified? Yes, Your Honor. We, uh, we have no objections. Motion approved. Once bond is secured, defendant will be released. Jerry, what the hell is going on? I don't know, Carl. I do. You made a deal. Now, what about Paul Brown, huh? He stays. Oh, that's real sweet. I can see it pays to have rich friends. You planning to run for office soon? Wait a minute, Jerry. What is he Carl, talking about? Talk now. Oh, wait a minute. Get off my back, Carl. All I can tell you, Carl, is that I didn't knuckle under to anybody. Well, what do you mean you didn't knuckle under? That's exactly what it does look like. All right, have it your way. Jerry, I don't want it my way. Don't you understand that? All I want is the truth. Now, why did you let that kid go out on the street? I'm sorry. No comment. Okay. I won't broadcast that. Not yet. Because I've always believed that you were straight, Jerry. But if I find out that you've been playing politics, I will nail you for it. I promise you that. Okay. Will somebody tell me what's going on? I mean, right now, everybody thinks I can be reached, that I have been. I want them all, Jerry, every last one of them. And Billy Wilson's going to lead us to them. The DA bought our plan. What plan? Billy's going to be tailed from the minute he gets out. If I were him, I wouldn't go anywhere near those others. You would if you were scared not to. What is it those guys hate the most? They've got a thousand names for it. Rat, Fink, Stooley. But Billy didn't talk. The Dido kid did. The guys outside don't know that. And Billy doesn't know it either. All he knows is the word's out, he's the fink. How did you manage that? Well, I have a friend who's a jailer, and he happened to get next to Billy Wilson, and he just happened to drop it. That's a dirty pool, Mike. I love it. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Billy also knows that he's the only one to be released. If I were him, I'd figure I owed somebody an explanation. <laughs> okay. Billy! Later. Wait! Wait for your father! I'll be back. But he just called. He's on his way. Mom, will you get off my back? This is important. you'd like it. <laughs> you knew I'd like it. Something's wrong, right? Oh, I just thought we ought to have lunch together more often. If you're hungry, try the trout. What's the surprise? Surprise? Dad, you haven't picked me up for lunch in the middle of the week since I can't remember when. Consider it your birthday present. Thank you. You have a suspicious nature, you know that? And well-deserved. Okay. I do have a surprise. I decided not to retire. Well, that's hardly a surprise. Oh, it isn't? The only surprise is that it took you so long to decide. Well, now that the shock of this announcement is over, what do you say we order lunch? Eat it slowly and enjoy it. <sighs> Take a look at those prices. Well, I'll enjoy my lunch, but I don't think you will. Who 
started the shooting? I don't know. Came out of nowhere. The special unit was about to move in with bang. Can you see anything? No. The cops all over the place. You brought them, didn't you? No. That's why they let you go, isn't it? No, listen, huh? I swear I didn't. Huh? You sold me out, I man. swear I didn't. You people inside, come out with your hands up. Come out with your hands up. Nobody has to get hurt. You see where the last shot came from? We don't want to hurt anybody. Come out now. Come out with your hands up. Come on, there's a way out back. Let's go. I didn't do anything. You can't hold me, Stone. Okay, let's all turn left. The other way, number three. Turn left. Take your hands out of your pockets. Turn left. Let's face forward. That's the one, third one on the right. Number four, he's the leader. You're absolutely sure? Yes, I wouldn't forget him. He broke my arm. Henry Brown, Paul Brown's brother. Had a big influence on him, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Tanner, take care of him, will you? Take your jacket off, number two. Is that all of them? Well, that's all we know of for certain. Well, what about the sniper up on the roof? Well, he got away. We don't know what he was shooting at or who. Mike, the search warrant just paid off. We found this at the Wilson house, buried in the trash, and it's only missing one string, the low E. The same kind used on Mrs. King. Does Billings know about this? No, I had to clear with the lab boys. Listen, I think he's with Wilson at the prelim. Come on. Well, uh, beside running, what did he do to call your attention to him? He tried to escape. Wasn't it a fact that everybody was running? How could you tell one boy from another, the innocent from the guilty? Did he have a weapon on him? No, sir. A mask? No. Money, jewels, anything that might lead you to believe he had committed a crime of any sort? No, sir. Well, in other words, Officer Haig, all you ever did was arrest a frightened, running boy. No further questions. Mr. Billings? Uh, no redirect, Your Honor. Sergeant, you're excused. Mr. Billings, uh, any more testimony for the prosecution? Yes, Your Honor, with the court's permission, I would like to recall Mrs. Robert Wilson to the stand. Mrs. Wilson, may I remind you, you're still under oath. Mrs. Wilson, have you ever seen this guitar before? I don't think so. Look closely. One of its strings is missing, isn't it? Yes. You do know that Mrs. King, the murdered victim, was bound by a guitar string, don't you? Objection. No foundation. Sustained. Mrs. Wilson, you made a prior statement to the investigating officers that your son had never owned a guitar. Is that correct? This is a bill paid for by you for the sale of a guitar and private music lessons in your home for your son. Is that your signature? 
Yes. Then your son did have a guitar around the house, didn't he? And this is it, isn't it? Yeah. It's not mine. I've never seen it before. I've not come. Where did he keep it, Mrs. Wilson? In his room? Yes. Was it there the night he was arrested? Yes. And how did it get buried in the trash? Not by Billy. He couldn't. You put it there, didn't you, Mrs. Wilson? After you read the newspaper. I didn't know what to do. I thought it might prove something. It does, Mrs. Wilson. It does. Billy. Billy. <laughs> I'll suggest that the boy plead Nolo if you won't bring charges against the mother. Okay, Harry. I'll arrange to have his plea taken first thing tomorrow morning. Get Get, out! Get away from him! Get away, I'm gonna kill him! Don't shoot, Mr. King. Now get away. It's all over. I promise you, it's all over. Oh, he's going to be punished. I promise you that. Believe me, he will. But not that way. Not with that. Not with the same violence which he committed on your wife. She wouldn't want that. He ought to die. Then let it be God's will. You said that, remember? Please, Mr. King, put it down. Sniper is. There's vengeance in all of us. Somebody over there said if we didn't do our job, they'd do it for us. With this. That's something I don't want to happen. Ever. Show no regard for either life or property. This court is convinced that you would be a menace on the street. I therefore sentence you to state prison to serve out a term of eight years to life. Bailiff, take charge of the prisoner. Jerry, wait a minute. Mike asked me to give you this file. Thought you might want to go over to robbery to question a witness. Come on now, Dan. This isn't a one-horse show. Is there anybody else? Nope. Well, you do have a way with words. Where is Mike anyway? I thought he'd be here. You're not going to believe it. What? Buying a dog. <laughs> You think Mrs. Harper will like him? Oh, of course she will. He's beautiful. Yes, he is. And he's cute, too, huh? <laughs> You're kind of cute, too. You know that? <laughs> oh, you sweet little baby. <laughs>
हेलो असलम बंधु आशा करी अपना सकते अनेक भाव तो नतुन आ कि भिडियो मध्य चले आसलम देखते वोने एक गाच रही है एवं वोटी हमारे बाड़ी आशेपास गाच बाड़ी सीमार गाच तो जो पियर्स एगल कथा ना कथा हे प्रकृतिक परेश देखते हैं से फूल गत सूंदर सूंदर फूल अपना देखते हैं कत सूंदर सूंदर फूल फूल अवश्य परेश सूंदर सूंदर फूल ये हम कैक्टास गाच पेवर्स देखते हैं ये गापाला मुश्किल छात्र कत शत तो अवश्य अपना जो एरक कैक्टास चारा चान अवश्य जो करते अवश्य जो करबेंपन कैक्टास चारा दीब ए रखी बस नतून नतन भिडियो पे अवश्य कमेंट कर जाना के रखम भिडियो देर चेषा कर प्राकृतिक परेश टाइप भिडियो देते चाहब तो जी होक आशा करी भलो थकबें भलो आलो थकबें चैनल थकबें आज के मत ए पर्यत सकले सुस्थान भलो थकबें आल्लाफिज